The second phase of the CRISP-DM cycle is the data understanding phase. This is the phase where we look at our current data assets and see what they can provide us and what they tell us from a high-level perspective. These data may come from internal systems like information systems or enterprise resource planning systems, external systems like market research providers, social media, or news articles, or created by the organization itself as a product of previous researches and projects done. The data understanding phase usually goes alongside with the business understanding phase. Depends on the approach that you are doing, one may start on either. Can you identify which approach starts with business understanding and which starts with data understanding? You may answer that question in the upcoming checkup quiz. Now let's say you are the sales data analyst in your organization and you were tasked to create the sales report which will be submitted to the management. The sales report should show this month's net sales per product and per territory. How would you do that? You need to collect the data first. For most mature organizations, data have been collated already. Your task is to collect it yourself from these sources where the data has been collated. If your analysis would require multiple sources of data, you would also need to identify how to integrate those sources so you can have access to all those sources at once. Now let's say you have access to the sources, but these sources have tons of tables of data. Which one should you choose? This is the objective of this task, to identify what specific datasets would you need and where to find them. You may also be required to document the process or methodology of accessing those datasets and identify any challenges which can serve as the feedback to the data acquisition process. Now you got your data. You need to know if the data is essentially usable and potentially can be merged in one report. You would look at the description of the data, format, data types, number of rows or distinct values per column, and so on. At this point, you would have an idea on what the data consists of from a high-level perspective. This process is useful especially when you are about to combine datasets in the succeeding steps. Is there a unique identifier that can be used as the key to join the two datasets? Are the column types the same? Are the date formats the same? This describing process would be able to help you with that. Now you decide to get a little bit deeper in your assessment. You would want or you would start forming your basic queries. You get the net sales and transaction count per day. And then you add another level of adding the product data so we can break down the daily figures into product groups. Just from here, we can get so much insights already from the daily sales pattern to high performing days and even high performing products per day. You may also want to use visualization, visualization tools to make the exploration much faster. As you describe and explore your data, you might also encounter some quality concerns, typographical errors, so if the data comes from a direct source or input source such as forms, multiple date formats if the data comes from various systems, product A on one system might be product number one on another, or some columns might have null values. The verified data quality phase tackles that, so if the data set needs intervention before you perform your dashboarding or even advanced analytics, you can address them as early as now. Again, the data understanding phase usually goes hand in hand with business understanding. As you gather business requirements, you would want to make sure that the data is available or can be captured in some way before we can present insights. If you were tasked to produce a sales report, but in reality, the stores are not storing sales data, then we won't be able to kickstart the project at all 
more so, we could not provide the requested insights from us.